Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I want to do a video today talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy, but first a word of prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for your holy word and for giving us prophetic signs to encourage and comfort us. And I ask you to use this video for your glory and to save lost souls. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, well, again, I have a lot of news stories to cover today. There's so much going on, it's unbelievable. And, and I can't even tell you how many news stories I could have covered that I cut out. Um, <clears throat> signs are all around us. If you are not awake yet, if you do not realize, the world as you know it is about to change like you can never even imagine. It is time to wake up. And for all the naysayers out there, all the mockers, all the scoffers, all the people that are telling me, you know, you're, when you're warning these people and then it doesn't happen, it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be bad. It's going to happen. The Bible gives us the signs. The Bible tells us it's going to happen. Every single prophecy in the Bible will come to pass exactly like God said. All the signs are here. And Jesus has told us in, in, in several ways and several times, he said, when you see all these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. He also told us when you see all these signs, know that it's near, even at the door. God is patient and loving and, and long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So if, if he delays things and, and, he, and things don't happen for another 10, 15, 20, 30 years, 40 years, whatever... You need to be ready anyway, because it could happen today. Jesus Christ could return for his church, for the body of Christ, at any given moment. And because all the signs are here, and, and it, even even <laughs> the secular world realizes things are just out of control and aren't, they're just, it's bad. It's probably not going to get better. It is time to realize that we're living in the very, very last days, and as I said, I have quite a few news stories, again, that point directly to Bible prophecy today. Uh, I have so many of them that, again, on some of these, I'm just going to read the headline and cover some more of them in detail. All the links to every one of these articles, though, will be in the description box. So you can check it out yourself. Uh, this first article, just a headline out of the Red Sheva two days ago, U.S. Intelligence Chief Warns of... Armageddon cyber strike. Interesting choice of the word Armageddon. And we keep hearing about the cyber threats to this nation, to our to our power grid. Uh, they've been hacking into the military. They've been hacking into the banks. As I say on a daily basis, it seems the United States is going to fall. There will be a one world government, a one world religion, one world monetary system. For that to take place, the United States must fall as a superpower. Could a cyber attack that wipes out our power grid or an EMP type attack? Or uh, could there be a total economic collapse due to cyber strikes against the banking industry? Who knows, but we do know it's coming and apparently so does our government as well. And if you read the article, it basically says it's, it's just a matter of time that it will happen. Here's, a, here's another headline. Uh, again, the United Nations has certainly never been pro-Israel, and that continues to be the case. Headline, uh, Abbas, Mahmoud Abbas, praises the United Nations vote to raise the Palestinian flag over its headquarters <clears throat> during this upcoming meeting in, in November, or excuse me, in September, just a couple weeks away now, when Pope Francis comes to speak. Uh, the United Nations has decided, has decided to, uh, to raise the Palestinian flag as a uh, was it non-member state or whatever um, at the United Nations. And of course that brings us to the next headline then. Because, because of that, because the United Nations is going to allow that, Abbas says the Palestinians now want the flag over occupied Jerusalem. They want the Palestinian flag to fly over what they like to call 
occupied Jerusalem, but Jerusalem belongs to the Jewish people, always has, always will, and it is the capital of Israel and always will be. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to go to some scripture here in, in just a second in Zechariah, but uh, this whole occupied Jerusalem thing, very, very interesting. What's going on over there is a very, very big sign for living in the last days. Zechariah chapter 12, uh, verse 2 and 3. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. If you read all of Zechariah chapter 12, the word Jerusalem appears, I don't know how many times, I read it twice in just the one verse, I read it three times in those two verses. And you go on down and Jerusalem is also mentioned in verse 5, in verse 6, in verse 7. The reason I'm bringing that up is even though Mahmoud Abbas wants the Palestinian flag flown over what they call occupied Jerusalem, if they would look in their Koran, they might notice that the word Jerusalem is not mentioned one single time in the Koran, and I believe it's mentioned over 800 times in the Word of God. But without a doubt, we are at the point in time where, one, Israel is a nation again. It was not since until 1948. Jerusalem was destroyed in A.D. 70 by the Roman Empire. It was not a nation again until 1948 after Hitler tried to wipe them out through the Holocaust. Since that time, they have been surrounded by enemies that hate them and want them annihilated. They're a little tiny, little tiny country about the size of New Jersey, surrounded by enemies, and they continue to thrive. Yet people and naysayers want to question Israel, question the Jewish people, and like to say, eh, it's not really God bringing the people back, the Jewish people, it was the Rothschilds, it had nothing to do with God. However it happened, God appoints all the people in charge to carry out his plan. You can blame it on whoever you want, but 1948 is a definite uh, fulfillment of Ezekiel 37 when God promised to bring Israel back. That's exactly what he did. I had a guy tell me that uh, you know, God, God has nothing to do with Israel. You say he protects Israel. He fought for Israel. And Israel lost the war in 1948. Wow, imagine that. They just became a nation, and immediately, as soon as they become a nation, they get attacked. And you're going to criticize this brand new nation for losing a battle? But did they lose the war? They're still there, and they are thriving. And God will protect them. And speaking about peace in the Middle East, there's another headline I want, just a headline I'll read. Netanyahu... In the UK says he is ready for peace talks right now. Daniel 9.27, the covenant with many that will guarantee the security of the Israeli people. Ezekiel 38 talks about that, how Israel will be living in the land of unwalled villages. They'll be dwelling safely. They'll be at peace. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 says that when they shall say peace and safety... Sudden destruction will come upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But there will be a final seven-year period of time that will begin when the Antichrist confirms this covenant, and the final seven years will begin. And again, Jerusalem is a cup of trembling round about. The world is turning against Israel, including the United States. And again, Zechariah 12, 4 says that... Uh, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. And uh, up until recently, I, you would think that there would be a, there would never be a chance that the United States would gather against Jerusalem, against Israel. But uh, you can certainly see that that might be the case now. But Netanyahu says he's ready for peace talks right now. Okay. Now I've got some news stories I want to get a little more in-depth on. There are so many news... Okay, so I'm talking about peace in the Middle East. i got a story coming up about the Temple Mount. 
Talking about uh, Armageddon-type cyber attacks. Netanyahu says he's ready for peace. Uh, here's an interesting article about RFID technology again. And I want to show you how the world is being indoctrinated, is, is, is learning to accept the Mark of the Beast technology, and, and quite frankly right now thinking that it's great, cool, cutting edge, uh, can't live without it type of technology. So here's an article out of Event Industry News. Country music festivals saddle up with RFID. This year, hundreds of thousands of country music fans donned their cowboy hats and high-tech festival wristbands as seven of the summer's biggest country hoedowns adopted the latest technology developed by radio frequency identification specialist Intellitix. 2015 marked the year of the RFID Country Music Festival with organizers enhancing their guest experiences with smooth and secure entry processes, fast and convenient cashless payments for on-site purchases, and social media brand engagements, all with a simple tap of an RFID-enabled wristband. Wow. Again, here's how it's being promoted. It, it gives the guest, it enhanced the guest's experience with smooth and secure entry to the events, fast and convenient cashless payments for on-site purposes, and social media brand engagements. Yes, it's just great, isn't it? That's fantastic. It's the best thing out there. That's the way it's going to be marketed. You can't live without this technology. Well, quite frankly, before long, the world won't be able to buy or sell without this type of technology. And the problem is you can lose your bracelet. It can very easily be stolen. You could even just accidentally leave it at home. So what's the next best step? Take that RFID chip and put it inside your hand instead of making you wear a bracelet. That's where it's headed. And people already around the world have that RFID chip already implanted in them. Uh, Revelation chapter 13 verse 15, 16, and 17, and he had power to give life under the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast, or the number of his name, and I wasn't going to go to Revelation 14, but uh, something in my spirit told me to do that, because people are being told how convenient and how great this is. But let's just look and see what God has to say uh, about it. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I am not saying that the, the people that have that chip right now have accepted the mark. What I am telling you is that's the type of technology or something similar that will be used in the end time for this, for the mark, for the mark of the beast. And people are being, again, indoctrinated into accepting it. And even though Christians like to will come out and say, no way, no how, that's the mark of the beast, it is still gaining in usage and popularity and it will eventually be implemented. Praise God, I believe the church will not be here once that happens, before that happens. Okay, now, we also know that the Antichrist, not only is he going to, he's not, not only is he going to enforce this mark of the beast and the worship and all that, but um, he will desecrate the temple. He will enter the temple at the abomination of desolation three and a half years into the final seven year period of time. And for him to do that, there has to be a temple in Jerusalem, again, Jerusalem's a cup of trembling, a burdensome stone, uh, and the Temple Mount has been uh, absolutely a source of riots and problems and frustration, 
and the Jewish people really have pretty much no rights up there but it's changing more and more and here's an article out of a breaking Israel news headline reads Temple Mount Victory Israel outlaws Muslim groups responsible for physical and verbal attacks on the Jews and Christians this Israeli defense minister Moshe Yalan outlawed two Islamic movement groups who harassed Jewish and Christian visitors to the Temple Mount on Wednesday in a major victory for Temple Mount activists seeking to open the holy site to people of all faiths Yalan declared uh, these two groups to be unlawful organizations now making membership in or financing the group illegal uh, the defense minister's decision came in response to a public appeal last month by public security minister uh, Gilad Erden and Temple Mount Heritage Foundation founder Rabbi Yehuda Glick. Yolan finished, uh, excuse me, Yolan, Yolan finalized the law upon the recommendation of the Israel Security Agency and Israeli police as a necessary means to preserve public peace and safety. These groups, uh, comprised of Muslim men and women respectively, have become famous for their verbal and physical attacks on Jews visiting the Temple Mount. Uh, but they have now been banned, and as you can see, uh, well, it goes on down here and it says that the Temple Mount activists praised the government's effort as a, as a first and very significant step in the right direction towards fulfilling the basic demand. For respecting human rights for all, including Jews on the Temple Mount, the world center for godly peace. We hope and are convinced that the government should continue in this direction for the sake of peace in Jerusalem. It's hard to not just watch, read some of these articles and just get, one, super excited. And two, just the feeling that comes over you when you see the word of God coming true and realize how close we are and how far along we are in we are into the last days of events. I just pray that people will wake up and people will come to know Jesus Christ. It's so sad to see how people will not respond. Here's another headline. It's a very important headline, but I got other ones I want to cover, so I'm just going to read this headline. Uh, Pope Francis to call for peace in his United Nations address. Again, Daniel 9:27. Uh, there's just, uh, again, the, the, the Antichrist will rise through a covenant. And, uh, wow, are things moving fast. All right. Now, here's another interesting article. I, I, it's not a super important article in some ways, but in other ways I believe it is, which is, again, just a sign of the times and, and showing you how people absolutely love Pope Francis and how he's using today's technology uh, out of uh, Slate.com, you can now use Pope emojis to talk about how much you love Pope Francis. Pope emojis. It says, as Pope Francis, and this is a very important first paragraph, as Pope Francis continues to please the masses, by worrying about the environment, fast-tracking annulments, and not judging people for being gay, it can be hard to come up with new ways to express excitement at just how great he is. Wow. Uh, let's pause there and go to some scripture. Second, that's, excuse me, Second Timothy, chapter four, uh, verse two through four. Preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. That is why the world just can't seem to express just how great Pope Francis is. <clears throat> with his arrival in the U.S. imminent, the Catholic Network, with the help of Swift Media, has come up with the solution. Pope emoji. Wow. Uh, incredible. And it goes on talking about different the different emojis and all that stuff. It says... Uh, 
well, I just want to make a couple observations here. First of all, the image of the beast is coming in so many forms these days. We have a huge uh, 180 foot mural of Pope Francis on the side of a building in New York. Again, as I said in the, day, the other day when I talked about that, probably couldn't do a 180 foot cross on the side of a building. You couldn't probably put John 3.16 on the side of a building. You probably couldn't put the name Jesus or put Jesus saves. Certainly couldn't put John 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life on the side of the building because the masses would be offended. And the same masses that love Pope Francis for his environmental thing and his fast-tracking annulments and not judging people for being gay, but, and saying that uh, even good atheists can go to heaven. They love his message. So, uh, <laughs> image of the beast coming in many, many forms. And it's tough about how all these people love Pope Francis, think about how great he is, how excited they are to meet him, to see him, to have, take a selfie with him, to have him come over to the United States. And I have to ask, how many of these people have ever been this excited about Jesus? Or how many of these same people love Jesus as much as they seem to love Pope Francis? It's pretty scary the way the world is falling all over this guy. Kind of how they're probably going to fall all over the Antichrist and the false prophet during the first few months maybe of the final seven year period of time before they start to realize, oops, maybe those born again Christians who were warning us who uh, seem to have vanished, maybe they're telling us the truth. <clears throat> For uh, GOP candidates, better with Pope than against him. Again, Pope Francis, he doesn't seem to be a spiritual leader. He seems to be a political leader. And uh, he's not running for president here in the United States, but he sure is influencing the race. For GOP candidates, it's better to be with the Pope than against him. So to some Republican presidential candidates, it's better to be with uh, the popular Pope than against him. Uh, it says, Marco Rubio, Rand Paul, and Ted Cruz have deep policy differences with Pope Francis. But the senators will break off campaign travel to attend his address to Congress later this month. The centerpiece of his eagerly anticipated visit to the United States. It says, regardless of what the Pope says or emphasizes, the simple fact of being associated with his visit is still significant for a candidate, said David Campbell, a professor at Notre Dame who studies religion and politics. The images are very powerful. Francis has become one of the world's most popular figures since his 2013 election to the papacy, drawing praise for his humility and efforts to refocus the church on the poor and needy. He also has become involved in numerous hot-button political issues, often staking out positions that put him at odds with Republicans. Basically, it seems that he's staking out all of the positions of Mystery Babylon and the, and the Laodicean church. Uh, it says here, he is a moral authority and as a moral authority, is reminding us of our obligation to be good caretakers of the planet, said Marco Rubio, a practicing Catholic. I am a political leader, and my job as a policymaker is to act in the common good. Again, that certainly sounds you know, like the right thing to, sit, to believe in and do and say. But as the world is heading straight into a one-world totalitarian government that's claiming to have the common good as its goal, with these Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development Agenda, uh, Global Warming, Climate Change, uh, Poverty stuff that the United Nations and Pope Francis is, is approving, you're going to be hearing more and more about the common good, and it's not going to be good. Uh, <clears throat> and then I wanted to, one other sentence here really caught my, my eye here. Uh... This is a quote from uh, Jeb Bush, I believe. And here's a man who comes with a gentle soul, and I think it might be really healthy for our country to hear someone speak the way he does. That's a quote from Jeb Bush. And here, here's a man who comes with a gentle 
soul, and I think it might be really healthy for our country to hear someone speak the way he does. Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Let's go back to this quote by Jeb Bush. And here's a man who comes with a gentle soul, like a lamb. His two horns, like a gentle little lamb. And he says, and I think it might be really healthy for our country to hear someone speak the way he does. Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. That's what the Bible has to say about how the false prophet will both act and look and speak. And keep in mind, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, the dragon gives his power and a seat and his great authority to the Antichrist and his partner there, the false prophet. Okay, let's move on. we got one last news story. Again, just interesting. Um, nothing major. <clears throat> After lottery in New York to see Pope Francis... Some winners are scalping tickets online. This is out of the New York Times. I have to laugh. It says about 40,000 New York area residents learned on Thursday that they had won two tickets in a city-sponsored lottery to watch Pope Francis' procession through Central Park on September 25th. A day later, many of them had been moved by the spirit of capitalism to offer those tickets on eBay and Craigslist in some cases, asking hundreds of dollars for each. Um, New, New Yorkers are not the only Americans eager to see the Pope or make a quick dollar off his visit. But New York is the only stop in the Pope's tour that will not offer the public a chance to see him without a ticket. To watch his motorcade through Central Park and attend a Mass, he will celebrate in Madison Square Garden later that day, requires tickets creating a, pretend, a potentially lucrative market for one of the city's unofficial patron saints, the Hustler. Tickets to the Central Park procession have been offered on eBay from $200 to $400. Um, and then it goes down here and talks about uh, the Mass. Tickets to the Mass in Madison Square Garden are being distributed by individual parishes and have not appeared on, for sale on the Internet. But tickets for prime seats for the Pope's appearance at the Rural Meeting of Families in Philadelphia are being offered online to the highest bidder. Join Pope Francis as he celebrates the closing of the Rural Meeting of Families, wrote one seller on Craigslist who offered two tickets for $5,000. This is the closing Mass with the Pope. Another seller listed passes to the Mass in Philadelphia for $250 and even offered to throw in rosary beads. Um, it's just very one... <laughs> Hypocritical of all these Catholics who claim to love Pope Francis and love his message. And Pope Francis hates capitalism and hates profits, hates business. And I have to ask, doesn't this sound a whole lot like when Jesus went into the temple and overthrew all the money changers? Just incredible. Absolutely incredible. We are living in uh, the really, we are living in the last days. It is absolutely time to make sure you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. He is your only hope. He's your only option for salvation. There is no other way. The world loves to say that we can create our own gods and our own path, uh, but that is absolutely false. There is no other source of salvation other than Jesus Christ. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 12 says, Neither is there, well, let me go there real quick. It says, uh, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And Jesus himself said that in John fourteen six. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And salvation is a gift. We are saved by grace through faith, not of works, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. The Bible makes it clear that we are saved by grace. It is a gift. 
from God. We can do nothing to earn our salvation. Being a Catholic and taking part in sacraments and going to church and going to communion, none of that stuff will save you. Being a good person and being and doing good deeds, that will not save you. You can do nothing to earn your salvation. If you could, Jesus Christ didn't need to suffer and die on a cross. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And priests can't forgive your sins. Only Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross can save you and forgive you of your sins. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gospel is so simple, and I was, I was, always, I was raised Catholic for, well, up until I was 16 years old when I started reading the Bible for myself and turned to Jesus Christ, put my faith in Him. I had no idea what salvation was about when I was a Catholic. But the gospel is very, very simple. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. He wants to free. He wants to save you. If you will call out to Him, put your faith and trust in Him and Him alone, and turn your life over to Him, and He will write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. You will have eternal life. Make sure you're ready. Keep looking up. God bless everyone.